Welcome to the French Snoofie. I'm Erin McDonald. Today I'm going to be making one of my favorite ingredients to cook with this time of year, butternut squash and or winter squash some people call it but uh, there's many different varieties of winter squash and they're great vegetarian I find them really hearty and uh, they're full of vitamins vitamin A and fiber potassium magnesium they are a super food again another reason why I like to cook with them this time of year so I just want to have one to show you this is an acorn squash and it's really beautiful um, and nutty I really like the flavors of the acorn. I'm not going to be using the acorn for this recipe today, but I did have a half because I have quite a few um, always in my refrigerator. So I'm not going to use this one, but this one is a beautiful acorn. And then we have the lovely butternut squash. And I think this is probably one of people's most favorite and popular for butternut squash soup. And there's all kinds of recipes. So if you're ever stuck, just Google that. I am going to show you how to cut and I have one in the oven already done. So just a quick little recipe for you. And sometimes when you're not used to working with ingredients, you just walk by them in the grocery store. So um, it's not intimidating. This is the butternut squash. So pick one up and if it's heavy, it's a good sign. It's ripe. It's, there's no soft spots. Make sure that there's no brown spots, anything like that. And all I've done is I've washed it so that way there's no waxy or no dirt on it. And you want to be very careful when you're cutting this because it is quite dense. So make sure that your board is secure and you have a very sharp knife. So I'm going to cut it for you. And this is the top, obviously, and this is the bottom. And some people like to cut off the top, but I don't. I keep it on for appearances, but that's entirely up to you. So I'm going to start at the bottom and you want to go pick your middle, the center as well you can. And just be careful with your knife because like I said, it's really dense. So just go down through it, watch your fingers. It's not a race. <laughs> and try to go through to the other side and slice down. I don't know if you've had rutabago or turnips, if you've ever done that. It's very similar in the texture when you're cutting it raw. So you do got to use a little bit of muscle, but that's fine. And then go down all the way again, right through the head. And then it starts to split kind of naturally on its own. So again, just go down all the way and then Keep be careful, moving the way all the way down until it comes open, just like that. <laughs> there you go. And look at that, it's beautiful. It's so nice. It reminds me of pumpkin. There's something about squash. It's just really autumn-y, so I love this. And it smells beautiful. So now, as you can see, there's this whole own natural cavity and uh, we need to get those seeds out and the pulp. It's a little bit stringy and loose. And so what I like to do to loosen it up first is to take a little paring knife, and just kind of loosen the edges like that. And you can also like take a little bit extra out to make the cavity a little bit deeper if you want, so that way you can fit more stuffing and, and goodies inside. And if you didn't want to stuff it, you can just have this beautiful butternut squash as is, roasted of course. <laughs> so that's what you would do, kind of loosen it up. And then I like to take a spoon, if you have like an ice cream scoop, that would work as well. But I feel you just have more control with the spoon. So you just do what you would do with a pumpkin, if you've ever carved a pumpkin, just around until all the seeds come out, loosen it up a little bit. And you can keep those seeds as well and roast them up if you want. Great crunch, great texture, and uh, yeah, they're great for a little snack. So I have my garbage here, I'm just gonna get rid of that. It's done, it's ready to be roasted. My oven is already preheated at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So it does take a little bit of time you need to roast it for around 50 to 60 minutes until it's soft. So it's a great excuse to put it in the oven, turn on Netflix series something, and just forget about it until you're ready for your dinner. But one more step you wanna do, what I like to do, it's gonna to help to cook it up even faster, is to make some slits. And again, be careful with your fingers, but 
have control of your knife, just some slits and it helps it cook up faster. And then turn it around and do it the other way. So you're making like a diamond shape. And then into a pan of your choice, a little bit of olive oil, not extra virgin, just olive oil and salt and pepper. That's it. That's how I do it. And if you want to add other spices, there's some recipes call for cinnamon, some brown sugar. It's all really nice. It's such a versatile vegetable. So there you go. It's going to go into the oven after I take out the one that I already have prepped for you. And that's going to be my lunch this afternoon. So let me get, get that out. There we go. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's so pretty. And it did take an hour, so that's what I needed. You just keep an eye on it. Come back after around 50 minutes. And also, you'll be able to smell this all through your house. So once you start smelling it, you might just want to check on it every once in a while. Now it's done, and the way you can tell that is if you push in, you can see that it's coming apart, kind of like a baked potato does. And um, so you can also put your knife. If your knife goes down through, it's done. It's gone right through to the other side but I have a stuffing for it. And you can stuff it with whatever you like, but again, I'm sticking to a vegetarian theme today and actually Mexican. So I wanna do a nice Mexican filling. Let me just get a fork. And I have some usual things you would find in like Mexican chili or Tex-Mex. Some kidney beans, red kidney beans that I drained and there you go, washed and drained. Some chickpeas, really nice. This is really full of fiber, this dish. And uh, it's really, really tasty. Some corn, and again, we're going with a little Mexican theme. So you can see I got like nice little colors going on there. Some corn. And this cavity is not too big, so I'm not gonna fill it up too much. I do have some rice. This is a cheap, just a store-bought rice in the packs that you can get. And it says two minutes on high heat. Now this squash is going to go back in until the cheese is melty and the ingredients are warmed. So I'm not even putting it in the microwave for those two minutes because it's going to warm through, obviously, for those 10 minutes that it's in the oven. So a little bit of rice. Oh, that came up pretty fast. I have a lot. And let's see, a little bit of salsa, some nice tomato flavor going on. It's also going to moisten, moisturize everything inside and some Tex-Mex and Mexican flavor. Some of that seasoning that you can find, you can get the packet so it's a little bit of a corner cutter for you instead of making your own. If you wanna make your own, there's tons of recipes for your own seasoning. So like that, mix it all up so that all of that nice Mexican flavor seasoning, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper, and of course, you know me, I gotta have some heat. So I'm going with the Chipotle Tabasco. A couple of drops of that. And I'm also using a garlic chili sauce. So I'm going in with extra heat because this is for my lunch. If you don't like the heat, leave it out. And I almost forgot my scallion. So I do like to have a little bit of crunch and that's where I'm gonna get it from, is this nice green scallion. There we go. Okay, there we go, perfect. And now we're getting ready to stuff it. So my oven is still going. I'm gonna put it back in for another 10 minutes after I get this filling in, just so that it warms through and that the cheese gets melted. Mix it up really, really well. You can see all those red kidney beans, you can see the scallions, the corn. This is really, really yummy. And with all those spices, it's really gonna warm me up this evening, or this afternoon. There we go. These, what I like to do if I'm making it for one or two people, obviously I have this left over, but if you're making it for two people, then I, I like to serve it for Keith and I, one each. And that's our meal right there. And, um, it's quite filling, you know, you eat the whole thing, but it's really healthy and filling. And um, yeah, I would say for kids, maybe half of one, half of this would be perfect for them. 
There you go. Now, into the oven. It's going to go for another 10 minutes and you're gonna see how ooey and gooey and delicious this butternut squash is when it comes out. And so we're back and it's been going for 10 minutes, like I said, in the oven and it's all heated through and I just wanna show you how beautiful it is before I have my lunch and enjoy this. And I can actually save half for tonight because it's quite large, but so delicious and healthy. So you don't have to feel guilty about eating this one. And um, how beautiful is that? Look, you have the cheese, it's all melted down all around. Um, it's nice and soft and buttery, hence the butternut squash. Um, you can stuff it, like I said, with anything you want. You can do some meat or chicken if you want. Even fish would be really lovely presentation inside that little cavity. This is my vegetarian choice today, the Mexican one. So however you want to eat it is entirely your business. i uh, a little anal about mine. I like to start from the edges and work my way out. And look at how beautiful that is. So yummy. And then get a little bit of that. Beautiful with the cheese. And you have the salsa that makes it nice and moist. And uh, that right there is a perfect little bite. So I hope that you enjoyed my recipe today for butternut squash. Don't be intimidated. You saw how easy it was. And of course, I hope that you enjoy.